Hello, my name is Matthew, and I'm reading Joseph and His Brothers by Thomas Mann. Uh, Thomas Mann is a uh, f fairly major literary figure of the 20th century. He's a German writer. He wrote uh, great big, thick German novels, and uh, Joseph and His Brothers is a great big, thick book. Um, I'm reading this in, in part for uh, March of the Mammoths and also for Alan, Mar Alan Morton's year-long uh, Chunksters for Charity Challenge. In fact, I'm, I'm reading this book along with Alan. We've been corresponding back and forth and it's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Um, also, uh, Jack from Rambling Rock on Tour is uh, reading along as well, which is uh, great. Um, <clears throat> so, last night I finished the the first part. Uh, th there's four major parts of the book, and I, I finished the first part, which is the stories of Jacob. Um, and uh, my, my my first impressions of what I've read so far is that um, it's it, it's it's brilliant, it's beautiful, but uh, that. <laughs> The book is a modern retelling or reimagining of the stories in uh, Genesis, um, primarily focused on uh, Joseph. The part that I read uh, follows, mostly follows um, Jacob, that was Joseph's uh, father. And the book, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a history of the beginning of the world, a history of the beginning of mankind, as, as told through the Bible. And something that Thomas Mann, I, I believe, does uh, brilliantly is uh, blending together um, the biblical history and creating a richly described world uh, and then including the, the, the narrative and it, he is able to fairly seamlessly go, um, go go back and forth the issue that I have is that it's imbalanced um, there's so much just like, in a lot of ways, like like Genesis, it's um, dense, it's rich, uh, and tell, t tells you a lot. And then it, it, there's cracks in this world that he's uh, created, and these cracks are the narrative. They're these small splices of uh, human relatable stories um, but there's too much history I, I really struggle to comfortably describe what I've read so far even as a novel in, in, in any conventional sense um, and I, I think about things like you know what, what I've read has been really impressive or brilliant um, but it hasn't been enjoyable or um, emotionally connecting to, the, to these characters. Um, e even though Thomas Mann is doing a lot of things really, really well, um, uh, the, the, the modern aspects of the book, in, in the sense that uh, he's creating psychological portraits of these men, um, men of men, people. Um, you get rich, fully fleshed out um, characterizations um, of the, the people that lived at the time, um, which includes a, a richly described world that they live in. Um, 
and at the same time, it, it feels authentic um, in the sense that it feels timeless. It, it, it still has a biblical uh, resonance or, or tone to the book, um, which goes a long way to making the reader understand that the people that lived at this time are very much the same people that are living today. Uh, the history or the, the stories that we read in Genesis are the same stories that they had through oral history that they, they told one another. Um, a difference might be that um, the stories of Genesis that they're talking about or is a closer history than what we have. But all of it gets buried. Uh, there's so much weight looming over this story that there are amusing episodes or interesting episodes, um, but I, I almost struggle to, um, I, I would be hard pressed to describe much of what I've read in this book. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about the ending uh, to give you a little bit of a sense of what I'm talking about. Um, so like I said, we're, we're, the, the first book is mostly focusing on Jacob and <clears throat> through all of this history and this world and everything, uh, he basically has a series of picaresque adventures, uh, gets into scrapes and misunderstandings and finds himself um, in, in, <clears throat> in uh, pickles uh, towards the end, he um, has become in servitude to a man, and Jacob loves um, this man's daughter. The man has two two daughters, and he loves one of them. Things things happen, um, and now he's going to marry uh, the woman that he loves, and they have a wedding ceremony. They have their um, night of consummation, uh, only to be found out that he has been deceived and that the man has actually um, switched the one daughter for the other. Um, and it's, uh, uh, at some parts, amusing. Um, when the man is, just, when the man is uh, describing um, their... Uh, bedroom that they're going to consummate their love. Uh, he says that the, the windows are going to be blacked out. It's going to be completely dark. Jake, <clears throat> Jacob says, uh, uh, may I have a, a, just a small candle flame? And the man who's um, knowing that he's going to be deceiving Jacob feigns uh, shock basically says, how dare you speak of my daughter this way with your salacious thoughts? And he goes, all right, I, I'll, I'll deal. I'll deal without the candlelight. Um, and then he w wakes up and finds out that he's been deceived. Um, and it, w it, w it was very well done. Uh, some parts bordered on being maybe a tad maudlin. But the larger issue is that as a reader who doesn't know if at any point we might break into a 10 or 20 page, a 10 or 20 page description of s something um, important to biblical history or some fantastical dream. Andy, come here, come here, you wanna say hi? Did you hear Andy? He wants to play. Um, it, weighed, it weighed on me. Uh, the book, uh, so far, just already feels bloated. Um, I'm 300 pages in, I believe, on a, six, a 1600, or 15 or 1600 page book. Um, and it's already feeling overdone. There's not enough story um, and unfortunately, 
the histor the, the 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 interesting historical parts um, at this point um, haven't been impressed upon me. So I I don't believe that I've even learned anything. Um, so at the moment, it's. Um, it's been problematic. There, there, there are large portions that I love, portions that have been difficult. Um, I'm hoping that as I go along, um, there will just be more of a story, a human story to be told. Um, I, I almost feel like Thomas Mann is trying to do two or three totally different things and bring them together um, so I, I don't know that this is uh, just the, the first part of four um, I'm not necessarily thrilled about uh, continuing to read um, but um, we'll, we'll see how it goes um, I'll tell you what the next the next chapter What's the next uh, part in this thing? Uh, young Joseph. So, 300 pages in, now we're gonna uh, learn about Young Joseph. Um, so, uh, Joseph and his brothers, I read the story of Jacob. Uh, it's by Thomas Mann. And, uh, I don't know what else to say. Let me know if uh, let me know if you read the book. Let me know if you love it, um, or any issues that you might have had with it. Let me know if you've read anything else by Thomas Mann. Um, he has a handful of things that I uh, unquestionably, uh, absolutely love. Uh, so, so he, he is one of my um, um, writers that I uh, really do like. Um, and that, that's it. That's what we have so far. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, that's it. Goodbye.